In experiment 5, we will be performing a kinetics experiment. We are going to monitor the rate of the reaction between the chromium ion and EDTA. We will monitor the progress of the reaction using the change in color and a spectrophotometer. In this experiment, as you watch the reaction proceed, you will be taking measurements of the absorbance of the solution that you have prepared. At the end of the experiment, you will be able to plot the absorbance as a function of time, the log of the absorbance as a function of time, and then inevitably extrapolate data regarding the rate and then plot the log of the rate as a function of the log of the absorbance. In order to do this, in order to do this experiment, you will need the following pieces of equipment. The spectrophotometer, 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, some 150 milliliter beakers, a few watch glasses, some cuvettes, some disposable pipettes, Kim wipes, some water baths, and a digital thermometer. In this experiment, your TA will calibrate the spectrophotometer for you. This will be done using the EDTA solution as a blank. It is set such that there is 0% transmittance when nothing is in the spectrophotometer and 100% transmittance when the EDTA solution is placed in the spectrophotometer. In this way, the only substance that will be absorbing the light will be the chromium ion complex that you will be forming throughout the course of the reaction. The spectrophotometer is capable of making measurements at many different wavelengths. The complex that you will be forming has an optimal absorbance measurement at 545 nanometer wavelength. For this reason, the spectrophotometer will already be set to 545 nanometers. Some of the spectrophotometers have a little toggle switch on the bottom. It should be set to the left, where it reads between 340 and 599 nanometers. Please do not touch this toggle switch or adjust the wavelength in any way. Your TA will already have calibrated the machine to read a zero when there is nothing in the machine. Using the blank, which contains only EDTA, I'm going to show you how to make a proper measurement using the spectrophotometer. When you are ready to begin your measurement, you will transfer your reaction mixture into the cuvette. You may use a funnel or pour carefully. Once you have completed pouring your sample in, close the sample holder or cuvette with its lid. Obtain a clean Kim wipe from your TA and holding the cuvette from its lid, carefully wipe down to ensure that there is no liquid and there are no fingerprints or grease on the exterior of the cuvette. Open the lid for the spectrophotometer and place the sample such that the white marking is aligned with the raised black piece of plastic at the front of the hole for the sample. Insert the cuvette completely and close the lid. In the case of the blank, it should be reading 100% transmittance. If for any reason you doubt this or you think the calibration has been altered by someone, please ask your TA to come and rapidly they can make the calibration once again. This will ensure that your readings are uniform. 
In your section, there will be two spectrophotometers for each TA. Once you begin taking measurements with a particular spectrophotometer, please make sure that you always use the same machine in order to take all your subsequent readings. Kinetics is very sensitive to change in temperature. For this reason, it is strongly recommended that you perform your kinetics experiment using a water bath. Ideally, your water bath will be between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. The actual temperature is not important. What is important is that your temperature stays constant throughout the course of the experiment. You may use your digital thermometer to measure or monitor the temperature of the water. Do make sure to press the 0.11 degree button to ensure that you are able to read the temperature as accurately as possible. You will obtain your solution of EDTA from the large container in the counters. Be sure to obtain it in a small beaker. Come back to your desk and measure 50 milliliters of your solution. Carefully note which solution of EDTA you have taken as there are three solutions and each one is at a different pH level. Transfer the EDTA solution to a clean 150 milliliter beaker. Place the beaker in your water bath and allow it to equilibrate for a minute or two. If the be beaker begins to float, place a watch glass on top to keep the beaker steady. You may adjust the height of the water in your water bath. It's only important that the level of solution in the beaker remain below that of the water in the water bath. When you are ready to start your experiment, one of you, one of the partners, should be noting the time carefully. You start your time when you add the chromium solution to your EDTA solution. For example, if we decide to start at a particular time, then at the moment that we're going to add the, e the chromium ion solution, we will start the measurement of the time. Readings will be taken every five minutes on any particular solution. It is important to note the exact time at which the reading is taken. Even if it's not exactly at five minutes, you must note the exact time at which the reading was taken, otherwise your data will look awkward on the graph. Making note of the time, we'll add the chromium solution now. The amount of chromium solution that needs to be added is specified at the end of the lab manual. It is very important to ensure that the beaker does not tip over while you're adding the chromium solution or at any time during the course of the reaction. Swirl the solution from time to time to ensure that the reaction mixture is uniform. You will be doing this reaction concurrently or at the same time for all three pHs. However, it's very difficult to make three simultaneous readings using the spectrophotometer. And for this reason, we strongly suggest that you stagger the start times of your experiments by a minute to a minute and a half. This will ensure that roughly every one and a half minutes, you're making a reading on your spectrophotometer and will ensure that you will not be uh, trying to take a measurement at the exact same time that somebody else in your group is. As soon as you add the chromium ion, you'll notice that the solution is very light pink in color. That pink color will grow progressively darker over time. When you are about one minute away from taking your reading, you may slowly begin to prepare your sample. Carefully remove the lid or watch glass from your beaker, swirl the solution thoroughly, and transfer to your cuvette.
place the solution back in the water bath and place the watch glass cover on top. Close the cover on your cuvette and you may place that in a separate beaker or directly in the water bath if you choose to do so. This will ensure that the temperature remains constant. Approximately 30 seconds before you are ready to take your measurement, remove the sample from the water bath and holding the lid, carefully wipe down the sides of the cuvette with a Kim wipe to ensure that the sample is clean and dry on the outside. At about 10 seconds before you need to take your measurement, you may place your cuvette into the spectrophotometer and count yourself down by 10 seconds. At the five minute mark, note the value of the percent transmittance, which is the upper scale on the spectrophotometer. The reading for us is 81.0%. Please note that the percent transmittance can be measured to one digit after the decimal place. On the spectrophotometer, there are two scales. The lower scale is the scale for absorbance. You may ask why we do not read the absorbance directly from the spectrophotometer. The absorbance follows a logarithmic scale as opposed to the percent transmittance which follows a linear scale. The linear scale allows us to make that extrapolation to the third digit or the digit following the decimal. With the absorbance scale being logarithmic, there would be no way for us to make that approximation. So please make sure to use the percent transmittance scale. Once you have completed your measurement, you may remove the cuvette, close the spectrophotometer lid, and you should return your cuvette to the water bath to ensure that the reaction continues to proceed at the correct temperature. As time progresses, you will notice that the purple color becomes darker and more pronounced. This is indicating that more and more of the chromium EDTA complex is being formed. After you have taken measurements for between 90 and 100 minutes every five minutes on the spectrophotometer, you are going to force the reaction to come to an end. The actual reaction takes between four and six hours to reach completion and we don't have that much time in the lab. So we will artificially bring the reaction to completion by heating it in a boiling water bath. Your TAs will already have prepared a boiling water bath in the fume hood for you. Take your reaction mixture and bring a watch glass with you. Carefully transfer your beaker to the hot water bath and make sure to stand close by in the event that the beaker begins to bump due to the fact that the water beneath it is boiling. Be careful the steam will be very hot. After 10 minutes, you may carefully, remember the beaker will be hot, remove your beaker and watch glass from the hot water bath. It should be a very dark, almost black, purple color. Allow the solution to cool on your bench top for approximately five minutes and after that place the solution back in your room temperature water bath to allow it to completely equilibrate to the temperature at which you were formerly taking measurements. Once your heated solution has completely cooled to room temperature you will transfer it to your cuvette and take the final measurement for the percent transmittance as you did for all the other samples. This sample is the most important value that you will obtain throughout this experiment. Without this final value, you will not be able to complete any of the calculations for this experiment. 
Once you have taken this final reading, you have finished this experiment and you may carefully discard all the solutions in the sink and rinse everything with distilled water. Be aware that you will be monitoring three solutions at this time and heating all three, cooling all three, and taking final measurements for all these three solutions. Once you have finished, you will work your data and then be graphing it using millimeter, millimeter graph paper. If you're not sure what this looks like, you may ask your TA and your TA will be very happy to show you a piece of this. We also sell it in the stores, but you're welcome to purchase it at any place you like. This is a brief overview of what you will be doing in Lab 5.